Be a man among men. Those of us that were avid readers of Soldier Fortune magazine back in the 70s know which country used that as a recruitment slogan for their armed forces. Uh, the reason I used it is basically as an attention grabber. Uh, in making my videos about collecting mill surplus ammo, uh, and everyone knows how the market has changed and how it is in recent times, so it's kind of interesting when we get a large influx, or fairly large influx, of uh, military surplus guns. And basically what I'm talking about is the Italian Carcano carbines that are coming in nowadays. A uh, lot of activity, a lot of interest. I'm kind of trying to ride the wave. I've done some research and work with the Carcano years ago, but unfortunately, unless people, you know, are buying them or interested, there's not a lot of interest, okay? Now it's kind of like because there's so many of them available and so many people are looking for information now, um, I'm getting a lot of hits, I'm getting a lot of activity. So I've devoted some time with the channel to cover this because I can get, you know, more views and more interest and it does help people. And people have been uh, communicating with me, sending me photos, discussing things with me. So a lot of activity, which is good for everybody. Those of us who collect, for me, for everyone. So. Another thing uh, with the be a man among men, uh, I found that a lot of people buy these guns with no thought or foresight. It's just they're inexpensive and the attitude, well, I want a mill surplus gun because it's inexpensive and ammo will be inexpensive and just shoot it and, you know, put it up for a few years and then eventually when the supply of them being imported runs out, it'll be worth more. And, you know, they're not wrong with that if that's what you're into, but I kind of get into all of it a little bit deeper. Um, and that's why I made a series of videos on me shooting uh, a number of these guns. Okay, the details of the ammunition and that are going to be in the next video on how I set it up at a 50 yard range. But I think now... Uh, and I'll discuss my videos and, and uh, something about subscribing and everything else there in a minute. But to keep those of us that only go three and a half, four minutes into the video for they turn it off, we'll take a look at all the guns that I use in this series of testing. It's a 9124TS, uh, another 91. 24 TS. Those were from uh, Buds and Palmetto State. A 91 TS, which was from DK, and then a 91 24 or 91 28 with that kind of orange stock. That's a 91 28 TS from DK, and there's another 91 28 that was out of my collection that I've had. I bought that in a pawn shop. And I dug out my other 91-24, uh, which I've used in a lot of other videos. It was difficult for me to find that, but the bore is worn out. Then, for some reason that day, I was bored, and I dug out my uh, M38 cavalry carbine in 7.35, and I just shot that for fun. Uh, then when I went on... We got our 91 TS's, the three of them from DK. That's the remainder of the four I bought. Okay, so we ran that one, that one, and then this one here. The M38 short rifle in 6.5, um, I started to do load development using this gun because the bore on this gun is exceptional. So I was testing reloads with the new 139 grain bullet. Uh, so that was used there. Then in my last session, we have the 91 cavalry carbine that I got from, uh, where was it? 
uh, I'm sorry. It's uh, the 91 Cavalry Carbine I got from Classic. I got that a few days ago and ran that. And also, just because we're shooting a ton of carbines, I went and dug out my 91 long rifle. Sorry about that interruption. I had to uh, move them around. And the last part of the testing, I went with a World War I dated 91 long rifle just to see because we're shooting all these carbines and that. I just wanted to see how the World War I era long rifle would stand up. And then uh, the very last one I did was the 9141 rifle. I ran through the same test just to give everybody an idea. And the last video will be that M38 6.5, just shooting it to see how accurate it is with my uh, ammunition. So that wraps up the guns I've used in this testing phase. Alright, those are the rifles. Uh, a majority of them are ones I've recently purchased out of these batches you're getting from DK Firearms, Buds, Palmetto State Armory, and Classic Firearms, okay? So, I have a, at least one rifle from all the different major dealers, alright? And what I intended to do was to go out and demonstrate the guns, how they work, and my other videos... Uh, when I bought them and took them apart, cleaned them, you know, show you the condition of the guns all together. But now we want to get into where a lot of the myths. Collecting Carcanos is not for everyone. Okay. I will go in to this rifle system. And again, you know, this is where you got to use some sense. Be mature. All right. 1891. That's what, this, what the 91 part of the designation stands for 1891 so this gun was kept in service for political and economic reasons long after it became obsolete as compared to other uh, rifle designs okay but more on that later so what what I have found um, in studying my analytics on YouTube and that is number one eighty percent of the views on the Carcanos and the recent views are not from people subscribed to my channel okay so if you're interested or like these videos I am making please subscribe to my channel the reason is I am not making little brief uh, easy to follow just statements about this gun. I'm making a series of videos. This one is going to be number zero and it's going to go to number 21. There are 21 videos in this series as I go through the testing. Now a lot of you may not like the redundancy and all this other stuff, but if you're going to make an informed decision, if you're going to use you know, get into something to where you know what you're doing. The reason I do this is because I'm not just going to repeat something I read on a forum or a website or out of a book or I had one rifle and I shot it and I didn't like it and I'm not, you know, oh, well, Carcano sucked, you know, you can't hit nothing with them. Maybe you got one with a worn out bore. Okay? The sights on these guns are difficult to get used to and use. They are standard for what was used at the time, again, back in 1891. And they're all set for like 300 meters, 400 meters, some I think are set at 500 meters, okay? And you can go, well, the book says this and this. That's true. But in my findings, taking these things out, and putting rounds through them, you are going to find inconsistencies. So in other words, even though somebody wrote a book and somebody had a manual, I had some guy from Italy telling me uh, he was reading and translating out of the manual what they're set for and this and that. It doesn't matter what anyone says or knows. 
what matters is when you stick ammunition in the damn thing and shoot it, can you hit anything, okay? That is the whole point of me making all the videos. And yes, after expanding hundreds and hundreds of rounds, I'm getting used to shooting these guns to where I can actually hit things at different distances using the sights. Now, there's a lot of pros and cons about the Carcano, but I will make a separate video discussing it. I will also make a separate video showing you back in 1891 what other countries are using compared to this. And you will see that it's all pretty much standard stuff. All right, there's a lot of myths and a lot of things out there uh, about this gun. And the shortcomings are, number one, the sight system is difficult to use. Number two, the way this gun is designed, you really can't put a scope on it. Okay, they have done it with a side mount scope, like uh, the Oswald gun, to where you can get the in-block clip in where something like the Mosin Nagant, even though it uses a clip, a stripper clip, you can put a side mount scope and get your fingers up under there once you bend down the bolt handle and load the five rounds in uh, and keep the scope over the uh, bore or the barrel. Where the Carcano, it has to be an offset thing in order to get the packet of ammo down in there. So that is a real big shortcoming on the design, and you really can't sporterize it. The cartridges are not as powerful as like 8mm Mauser, and yes, I know you're going to say, well, they converted them to 8mm, which, if you want to go there, fine, but I don't know about shooting one of them, and by the way, I have one of them showing up. So, um, it really isn't easy to convert this to another caliber and basically like they say around these parts it is what it is it's kind of a lightweight battle rifle that was intended not to be a target gun was not intended to be used as a uh, sporting rifle or a hunting rifle even though you know you can hunt with it and people do but uh, that was not the intent of what the original weapon was designed for it's a military combat gun with simplified sights that won't break that easy to be used at shooting at a man-sized target at different distances. Okay, And what I try to do is to demonstrate this and demonstrate to you that, you know, even for its shortcomings, if you wish to spend the time, do the research, Learn more about this gun, okay? And it's not easy. It's, it's not like picking up a match-grade rifle or a more modern design where the sights are set at 100 yards with a flat shooting cartridge, okay, which either the Swiss straight pulls or the uh, Swedish Mauser. I mean, you can get deadly accurate results. They're very high quality guns. They're made with a much more powerful flat shooting cartridge, okay? And you can still get the ammunition, you know, other than this military surplus. See, the problem with the Carcano and the odd bullet in that is getting the correct ammo and getting ammo that works in it right, modern ammo. Shooting stuff like this has been around for years. Uh, yeah, it'll go off. It'll work. But are you getting the performance factor, okay, as if you had recently produced ammunition, of a, you know, other than this stuff that's 70, 80 years old, okay, ammunition does break down. So that's my spiel on it. And the thing is, I know a lot of you watch my videos because you're thinking about buying the gun. Okay, and, and when I review the company and what I get, that, that's basically what you're doing. But I've noticed that 80% of the views I get on these videos are from people that are unsubscribed. And now that I'm making this series from 0 to 21, you should be subscribed. Because what I'm going to do is put up this video, make a premiere of it, and I'm going to get this video up to give everybody more or less a heads up on what I'm doing. Okay? 
that I'm going to wait about a day. And it's broken down into three range sessions where I take, I think, three guns to be tested and I may even throw in a little wild card or the bonus videos. I'll take a gun that has that wasn't bought from one of the distributors. Um, I do shoot a 7.35 cavalry carbine just for the hell of it at the end of the day or when I got done with the testing session uh, just to break it up. Okay, and it is not a recent purchase. Okay, that gun. It's, it's in a lot better shape and it took me a while to find that gun but we do that. So we'll go through it all and the reason it's important to subscribe is because if you just catch this video and you don't subscribe and get notified as I'm uploading the other videos in the series or if you catch one in the middle you have no idea what it is. All it's going to be me talking about the rifle shooting it and that. You don't realize that I've done this with an extensive amount of rifles. Okay? So, subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. It'll be easier for you to get this information. The reason I make this and put this out is so you can have viable information. Okay? Um, you know, you see me do it. And, you know, when it comes to whatever someone reads or whatever research somebody did, okay, it boils down to make a video showing me something different or better or with the same amount of time put into it to say, you know, here, my findings are different than yours. I just kind of do it to show you in general how it all goes, all right? So... Subscribing is cool. I'd like to take time now to thank all the people for their input, for guys keeping me informed on who's selling what, and when they get email notifications on new, uh, uh, new companies selling these variations. Uh, recently, J&G Wholesales has started selling Carcanos. They're kind of late in the game. The other uh, different places online, you could buy them or up there for a month or so. And so now J&G is uh, selling them. So thanks for networking with me, guys, and keeping me informed. And, you know, if this helps you and you feel that you could, you know, uh, a little support would help. Uh, I've spent a ton of money uh, doing this. And... You know, the whole reason I do it is so you can get an opinion without having to go through the time and trouble, okay? I do things like this because I enjoy doing them, all right? But there is a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of work involved, you know? And your support helps keep me doing this and being able to keep going on and, you know, going to the to the extent that I do in my testing and that. And yes, I am working on ammunition, the cast bullet ammunition, which by the way, if you look around on my channel, that's another thing, subscribe to my channel, go to my channel, and search for cast bullet results in the 6.5 by 53 or 54, whatever, put the metric designation. And I give you all the information you need to load the cast bullets. I made the video four years ago. Okay, it's out there. Just look for it, you know. So, I'm going to get this up. We're going to kick this off. And we're going to get this series of 21 videos rolling here right now. So, please, subscribe. Stay tuned. If you can send some support, it will be appreciated. And keep me going in my... Uh, endeavors here and 